Hello everybody, I am Martina and I'm an Italian online teacher. Ever since I shifted from teaching online a few hours a week during my master thesis to a full-time online teaching position, my biggest struggle has been organization. At the beginning, I started with a paper notebook where I keep track of all of my students' needs, their goals, their requests, um, the material used, and it was fine having just a few students. But as the number of students increased, I find myself having a really hard time keep tra keeping track of everything. So I literally covered myself and my desk of sticky notes. So I was like, well, you know, I'm an online teacher. Let's try something online. So I, at first, I just shifted from my paper notebook to Word. Bad idea. And then I tried Google Docs. I tried Google Sheets for a while as well, but nothing worked out. I was looking for something interactive, something visual, because I'm a very visual person, and also something that could sync uh, with all my devices, so I could have access to my students' database from anywhere. I tried almost everything, and finally, I found a solution in Trello. I'm able to keep track of students' requests, make teacher notes, upload material without the worry of, oh my god, where did I put that? PDF file or that presentation. I'm able to label my students by level so I can do level search and also I am able to browse that online from any devices from anywhere. So if this might be a solution for you, come on, I'll show you. Oh and have I mentioned it's totally free? Okay, so first of all you want to sign up either with your email address or your Google account. So let's do it. I'm going to register with Google. And I'm going to put my email and my password. OK, and this is what comes up to you. So basically nothing. You can go here and change language just in case you are not an English speaker. I'm going to set it up to English. Simply go on create a new board. You can call it, uh, I don't know, teaching, for example. So what's going to appear here is this. This is your registry where you keep track of everything. Now, usually what I do is I set up a date, the day of the, the lesson. So for example, today is the 20th of January 2018. For now, let's just add a few more dates. So the 21st, January of 2018, and then let's add a 19. 19 January 2018. Of course, now these are not in order. What I like to do is to have on this column my newest lessons, my latest lessons. So I'm simply going to click on here and drag it. The cool thing about Trello is that you can drag and drop everything, and to me it's gold. Now, we have, we said that this is a card, so let's add them. For example, here. Simply, what I do is I type my students' names. So Ashley, and then I add Cody, then I add, I don't know, John. All right. So let's say that on the 19th, I have only three lessons with them. Now, I can click on Ashley and it opens up this nice tab, which will be the lesson, Ashley's lesson of the 19th of January. So what I usually do, and because I am a, a very visual person, I'm a color freak. So what I do is I like to have everything visual at a glance. This is why Trello is great. So I click and create labels. I have assigned each level a color. So for example, here I selected total beginners and I selected blue. I have the green for beginners uh, and then I have the yellow for intermediate and eventually the red for advanced. Okay, 
So I have all of my students here. I do have two additional colors, which are the purple for homework, which is more of a reminder for myself than for the lesson. And eventually I have a black, black list for the no-show. If a student has a lot of no-show, it's a reminder to be a little, a little bit more strict on the rescheduling uh, system that I have with students. Okay, so we do have the labels. Now let's say that Ashley is a beginner. Okay, so it comes up here. And as you can see, Ashley, it's green. Woo. But if you click on the thing, you'll see beginners, which is how I like it. Now let's say that Cody is an intermediate. So either I click inside and go on labels, or what I can do is I simply go to the little pencil, edit labels, intermediate, save. There you go. Or shortcut, you just hover over John, which is advanced, and I press L on my keyboard and appear, immediately appears my labels toolbar. So I click on advanced, that's it. All right, now let's see how I do manage my student cards. So the most important things to me, they have a lot of cool features, but the most important thing to me is the attachments. Because attachments, you can either attach a link, you can attach from your Google Drive, from your computer. So, for example, let's say that I go on YouTube, so I copy the Ciao. link, and I simply attach it here. I can write it, so I can say here, 150 phrases for beginners, and I attach it. And it appears here. Simply, when you go back, to the card it saves automatically it shows you that it has a little attachment so you click link boom it opens also another cool thing for the attachment is that you can attach directly from your computer it uploads that means that you can even for example if something happens that the file gets erased from your computer you can simply go here and re-download it it goes here bling download it, which is to me amazing because sometimes I am a little messy with my files. Also, you can click here, have a preview of the um, lesson. Again, you can uh, download it, you can comment it, but I keep it simple. So this way. Also, add a comment. Usually, especially when I have a new student, I click here and I add a comment. For example, uh, she wants her homework in advance at least three days for example now this sounds like an irrelevant comment however when you start having a few students you know keep track of all their preferences all the little reminders it's really hard but at the same time it's also nice in my opinion when you remind all of their requests because it shows you care but hey, we're human, so it's basically impossible to remember all of their um, all of their requests. So as you can see here, you have the little bubble that says comments. When I see comments, I know there is a preference there. So what's this watch? Okay. So you have here she wants her homework in advance at least three days. Okay, cool. So the last thing I want to show you about the cards is the description. Usually, the way I keep track of my lesson is this way. So I put little dashes for the topic we did. And then I have a code for homework, which is, for example, prepare a dialogue on shopping. I don't know. Here I usually put what to do next, which is, for example, I don't know, uh, Italian preposition. Super hard topic, by the way. <laughs> so here I put what we did today, how to prepare a dialogue, next time Italian preposition and hit save. All right, so this is Ashley. So now let's see how to use it like a pro. Let's say that I have to plan the lessons for the day. So I could either scroll all the way and add a list here like we did before, or simply I can just scroll here, double click, and here will come position one. You can pick the position, but it's gonna be always one if you want it in this column. So you put the date, January 20th, 2018, and you click 
click on add and here you add your students and then let's say that you have also a class with greg who happened to be a beginner about the same level as ashley meaning that they're probably going in pair for what concerns um, their lesson. So let's say, instead of creating a new card, add Greg and uh, everything with the program, you simply click on Ashley, right? And what you can do is you can copy the card. So you put Greg here. You don't want to copy the comments because these are personalized, but you do want the attachments and you do want the labels. You want it to be on the 20th. And actually, Greg is right after Kyle, so you put it in position number two. And create a card. Boom. What you will see is that, well, he doesn't have homework, but what you will see is that a card will be created with the same description, same attachments, and same label as Ashley. Now, this might be a little tricky, but it's very useful if you are following a very structured program. Okay, so another thing that I find extremely useful on Trello is that you have the ability, as you can see here, there are a lot of lessons, a lot of students, might seem confusing, but you have this amazing search bar right here. And for example, you can simply search for a member, which we don't have any, but we can find also for labels. So if you want to see all of your beginner students, for example, you simply put hashtag and then you put beginner. And voila, you have all of your beginner students by date. Well, of course, I'm teaching, but then, then let's say that you want to see Ashley. So you click on her card and voila, you see everything here. Also, um, you can search for single members. So, for example, you want to find Greg. You will have here everything that Greg has done during the time frame. I am going to show you just a few more tricks, which are the coding. Now, I am not a programmer. I'm actually pretty awful with computers. But if you put two asterisks before and after the word you want to be um, highlighted, boom, bold. Isn't that amazing? So you have homework and homework, I always highlight them as well as the next day's activity. So if you click on save, you will have them bold. Also, not only bold, but you can put italic. You simply put a dash underneath like that and you click save and it comes in italic. So eventually one last thing that to me and the organizational freak that is in me, uh, I'm terrified that one day, you know, like something's going to happen to my computer, the program's going to close, anything, and I'm going to lose track of everything. So a really cool thing is that you can actually print your lesson. So you simply click on print and you'll have your amazing um, printed form. And then you'll have the date, the labels, all the homework, what you did, what's next time, this, the tools and the slideshow you use, the comments, everything is going to be here. You just click print and voila, you have saved on your computer, flash drive, USB, external memory, wherever you want. So this is pretty cool. Okay, so last thing last is that when your list is starting to become quite long like this. Now, as I told you, I have been using Trello for about six months already. So my list was humongous. Now, I don't really care because Trello is as functional as it was in the very beginning. It doesn't get slowed down, no matter how many files I uploaded or anything. But because I, I hold up my latest classes all here on this column, it's always uh, backwards. So it's not a problem for me. But if this line bothers you and you want it to be short, <laughs> what you can do is you, you can archive the lesson. So you simply click here and you go on archive this list. Now, don't worry, you can do it with as many as you want because the cool feature of it is that they stay. All right. So as you can see, there is no bar here because it's done. But let's say that you want to see um, 
Howard lesson, but he has this too. So you click here, you put Howard, and voila. Howard, despite here, we have only two lessons. We have doo -doo -doo, all his lessons. Uh, let's see another one. Ashley. So you click on Ashley and they are all here. Also, if you want to see everything that you have archived, you can go on show menu. Here there are so many other things that I highly recommend to experience because they're amazing. But you can go on archived items and here you'll see what is uh, the lists that you have archived. So you can actually repristinate them. So like, for example, you can go, oh no, what is it? Like this one, I really want it back. So send to board is gonna come back. Oh, of course you can change the background with amazing photos, with colors. Um, I keep it simple, but you can put literally anything. Like let's say you like color pink, a lot of backgrounds, let's say, oh, I like this one. So you click, voila, and you have an amazing pink registry and it's just super cool to me okay so that's about it all right that was all and to me this was the best way so far that i found if you have other techniques to keep track of everything please leave a comment below i'll be super curious to know so see you next time bye